Am I the a-hole for refusing to keep a low profile of my recent engagement and refuse to come without him to mother's birthday to accommodate a jealous sister? My sister, 28 female, who has always been spoiled and cuddled by my parents, was dumped by her long-term boyfriend for another woman after he graduated from medical school this past summer. When she was looking forward to being a doctor's wife, thinking she'd be bathing in rubies and pearls, and then proposed to that woman after only a few months. I, 36 female, just got engaged to my better half, 43 male, two weeks ago. My sister is insanely jealous and competitive. She always has to be first and always has to win. I expected she'd be jealous but grossly underestimated it. She was apparently so overcome with grief, she had a nervous breakdown and had to be hospitalized and then move back home with my parents. My parents have asked me to keep a low profile, have canceled my engagement party that was their idea until further notice, probably forever, and to come alone to my mother's birthday in a few weeks and leave my ring at home. They love fiancé, so it's not that they don't approve of the relationship. This was just to accommodate my sister. I said we are now a package deal. And if he is not welcome, I'm not coming. And I absolutely will not take off and hide my ring like some dirty little secret. And I told them they are uninvited from my wedding. And we are going no contact until they tender a sincere apology and revoke this ridiculous rule of keeping a low profile. I also said if this standoff goes through the wedding, we are going no contact for good. I've never missed a parent's birthday, so my dad is angry with me. And I called him a hypocrite because he went no contact with his parents for excluding my mother over religious differences. He insists this is different. And I said no, it's not, because he's expecting me to do something to my fiancé that he'd never do to his wife. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Info. Are your parents also getting divorced to make things easier for your sister? Must be hard for her to be confronted with people who have been together for so many more years than her own relationship lasted. Of course not. Well, you should ask them too, since the sister can't be around people in loving relationships. Not the whole. If happy moments in your life trigger severe mental health issues for your sister, that is absolutely a problem that needs to be examined. Harsh though it may sound, on some level, her struggles are her own, and it's not really reasonable to expect you to prioritize avoiding inadvertently triggering her in every situation. When my husband and I got engaged, we had lunch with his sister and a few friends the next day. At some point, his sister said and prompted that we would have to stop mentioning our engagement now because it would make other people unhappy. It's been nearly eight years, and I'm still mad I didn't have the wherewithal to say something to her about it then. Yes, it absolutely was indicative of larger problems in the horizon. I suspect this will go against the grain, but no a-holes here. Your sister has had a nervous breakdown that required her to be hospitalized. She's not being dramatic or dying in a hill for the sake of it. She was almost institutionalized. I don't have the expertise to judge her for that. Your parents are focusing their resources and effort with their child who was hospitalized. It's desperately unfortunate for you, and you have every right to feel hard done by when this is your time, and every right to take a stand for your fiancé, but your parents are not a-holes for this. They have a deeply unwell child. That has to be their focus. They are being unfair for trying to enforce a stricture on how you must behave, and you are in the right to defend your fiancé, but I can't in all honesty label them a-holes for trying to avoid triggering their daughter who's just had a nervous breakdown. It sounds like you all need some cool-off time. I'm specifically putting aside the obvious competition issues between you and your sister. You make it out like it all stems from her, but you appear to be minimizing her nervous breakdown, again, for which she was hospitalized. They don't do that for no reason. I think there's some mutual toxicity between you and your sister and that's causing you to center yourself and your engagement in this dispute. It's not about you. Your sister is mentally unwell. You're allowed to be upset that you can't have the focus when you just got engaged and to defend your fiancé. Your parents are allowed to think that protecting the daughter who's had to move home with them is the priority. Edit. The way you're talking about your sister's mental health issues in the comments is pushing you closer into a-hall territory, to be honest, OP. Your obvious relationship issues with your sister doesn't invalidate her nervous breakdown. You tell OP that her sister's mental breakdown is not about her, but you should really be telling this to the sister. Sister's relationship troubles have nothing to do with OP's engagement. And it wasn't Opie who tangled the two issues. It was the sister and her parents. The parents don't just focus their energy on their sick kid, as you say. They expect their other kid to not live her own life in a very normal way to appease her sister's mental illness. I highly doubt that this will support the sister's recovery. Not day whole. Next story. 
Am I the a-hole for publicly sharing my pregnancy and saying I don't care about my sister's miscarriage? I, 27 female, am pregnant with my first child. As expected, I am very happy, and I'm sharing news of my pregnancy on Facebook as I have several family members who live overseas, and also I want to. This is my first child, and I'm beyond happy. The issue is my older sister, 29 female, who is infertile and has given up on children after 9 miscarriages. I and my sister have never had a good relationship. She was sick as a baby and nearly died. The trauma of it caused my parents to favor her and place her above me, and I was always expected to make myself as small as possible to accommodate her. She always got a cake and more presents on my birthday so she wouldn't feel left out. I was told to hide my grades as she did very badly at school. I was also not allowed to display any trophies in my room because she might see them and get upset. My sister 100% leaned into this and made my life hell. She would make stuff up so my parents would take stuff from me and give it to her. I was even told to not go to my prestigious university, think Ivy League in my country because it would upset her. When I chose to go, my parents cut me off, which was fine as my paternal grandparents who pretty much raised me took care of everything. Since then, I have been low contact with my family and only see them around a holiday at my grandparents' place. They weren't even invited to my wedding. When I got pregnant, I shared the announcement online and everybody congratulated me, except my parents and sister, who harassed me and reported my post so it would get taken down. I just blocked them all. I saw them again on New Year's at the grandparents' place, and when they saw me, my sister started screaming at my grandparents, saying how could they invite me after what I did to her. She was also screaming at my belly as if it offended her. She kept crying and saying how could I do this to her. I told her I did nothing to her. She went on and on about her miscarriages and how hard they were on her, but I snapped and told her I don't care. She's not my sister. She's my bully who tormented me my whole life. I owe her nothing. My life has nothing to do with her. This got my parents mad and they screamed at me too. My uncles ended up throwing them out and it ruined a party. My family said I did nothing wrong, but my parents and sister's friends have been mass reporting my Facebook account until I ended up deleting it. Not the a-hole, and it sounds like you need to go from low contact to full no contact. Your pregnancy has nothing to do with her, and she needs to grow up. Your parents have enabled her to play the victim for her whole life. You don't need to contribute any time and attention to that. I only saw them during the holidays at my grandparents' place, but I don't think I can anymore. Not for me, but for my kid. I don't want her exposed to that. Definitely not, and you'd never be able to leave her in a room with them, even for a toilet break. They'd find ways to weasel in and manipulate her. Nothing sucks more than having to go no contact, but it sounds like this option causes less pain and stress for everyone. Best of luck with the rest of your pregnancy. I hope you celebrate and enjoy it well. And enjoy being a mother. Surprisingly, not the a-hole. Your parents sound like they groomed your sister to act like that, so ultimately they are the ones you should direct your anger towards. However, your sister being offended at you getting pregnant is completely childish and rude. I'm sure she had a really hard time emotionally with those nine miscarriages, and my heart definitely breaks for her. But you are bringing a life into this world. She should be happy and try to mend things with you in my opinion. It's more than unfortunate that your parents enabled her behavior and brought her up to be so entitled. Ultimately though, she will have a harder life because of that if she doesn't already. I think you should take solace in that and potentially forgive her for what she has done to you in the past, if not for her, but for you. Your parents are complete a-holes, and they should 100% be to blame for this all, I think. Cutting you off because you went to college? It seems like they set you up for failure and you ended up thriving, so you should be very proud of yourself. They also pit you both against each other from the moment you were born, so it would be great if you and your sister could reconnect and not give them the satisfaction of that working. I have many sisters myself and my dad definitely played favorites on my younger sister, but ultimately, we were able to bond through negative experiences facilitated by both my parents. I'm wishing that for you, or at least peace. Last story. Am I the a-hole for skipping my stepdaughter's wedding? I, 50 female, have two stepchildren, Sarah, 23 female, and Mike, 28 male. I have been in their lives since Sarah was two. Sarah's mom, Kate, was a drug addict, and when Sarah was three, she lost all her parental rights because of her addiction. Kate left after that and didn't have any contact until Sarah was 17. That's when Kate reached out to us, saying she was clean and wanted a relationship with the kids. My husband, Rob, was against this, but I wanted to give her a chance. 
We met with her, and it turns out she had been clean for a while, going to therapy, and had a decent job. Mike was against meeting her, and to this day insists I'm his only mom and Kate is dead to him. Sarah was more open to Kate, though, and resented Mike for rejecting her. I explained that Mike was older and witnessed Kate at her worst, so he has a different relationship with her, while Sarah only remembers her after getting clean. This issue still caused a lot of resentment between them and me. Kate blamed me for Mike being hostile and resented me. It didn't help that Sarah started rejecting me for Kate. She stopped spending time with me no matter what I did and stopped calling me mom. I told her how hurt I was, how she didn't have to choose, she could have us both. I never had an issue with Sarah and Kate, I only had an issue with being rejected. Sarah told me that while she appreciated me, at the end of the day, Kate was her and Mike's real mom. This crushed me. The final straw was when she didn't invite me to her high school graduation. I told her if she didn't want to be my daughter, then fine. From then on, she would be my husband's kid. Mike went no contact with her as well. Three months ago, she came over with her fiancé, who we didn't even know existed, to invite us to their wedding. She said she wanted me at a bridal party, but I refused. I told her we hadn't had a relationship in years because of her wishes, and it felt uncomfortable for me to take on that role when I barely knew her now. She said she was sorry. I told her I wasn't interested. She got angry and said I had to be there because, and I quote, what are people gonna think when both my brother and my dad's wife aren't there? Gramps, her paternal grandfather, is gonna get angry too. I told her she clearly didn't want me there and only cared about appearances and being on her Gramps' good side because it's rich. I am not coming, nor am I having a relationship with her. She started crying and begging for forgiveness, but it felt like crocodile tears to me. After she left, she kept texting me trying to get me to change my mind. Then on the day of the wedding, she texted that she was gonna leave an empty seat for me and that I was welcome anytime if I changed my mind. I still didn't go. Rob is mad at me saying I ruined his daughter's wedding and made her cry, that all she wanted was me there, and this was a chance to fix our family. Mike, who is also no contact with her, is on my side. Edit. So I would like to clarify a few things. Sarah's relationship with Mike is no contact because she couldn't accept his decision to cut Kate off. At first, Mike didn't support Sarah and Kate, but I sat them both down. I told them they both have very different relationships with Kate. Mike remembers Kate as an addict while Sarah only knows clean Kate, and both of them are entitled to their view of Kate. Mike accepted this and was okay with Sarah slash Kate, but Sarah couldn't accept it. She couldn't reconcile addict Kate with clean Kate, so she refused to believe Mike and downplayed a lot of this trauma. Sarah said things like, it wasn't that bad, it was not her fault, she was sick, she gave you life, you owe her, etc. By the time Sarah was 19, their relationship became and is no contact. Kate also couldn't accept this and blames me for Mike not wanting to talk to her. Regarding the wedding, Sarah reached out to me three months before the wedding even though they had been engaged for a year, saying she wanted to come over. We said yes, and she came with her fiancé, who we didn't even know existed. Apparently, they had been together for three years. When I say she apologized, I mean she said, I am sorry you feel that way, which to her was an apology, but to me it's not. She also referred to me as dad's wife, as in what would people say if my dad's wife isn't there? Not even stepmom, dad's wife. She also mentioned her paternal grandfather a lot and how angry he would be. In the two months leading up to the wedding, she texted me to change my mind, but all she talked about was the wedding will be ruined, grandpa will be mad, etc. Once the wedding happened, she blocked me everywhere. Then I found out today her fiancé blocked me too, even though I don't follow him. I only messaged him on Instagram because he has a public profile, but I have been blocked. Same thing with Facebook even though we aren't friends on there. She clearly wasn't genuine in her attempts to reconcile. And even if she was, it doesn't mean I am obligated to respond. She was 18 when she stopped calling me mom, 19 when she went no contact with Mike and doubled down on her decision, a decision she has held on to for six years total. She made her choice. Just because she's young doesn't make her entitled to forgiveness or a relationship with me. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You were the one to give the first push in getting Rob to allow Kate to see them. Sarah basically slapped you in the face for everything you did. You even told Sarah you were fine with being just a motherly figure, but she took it further by resenting you? Rob has some audacity to say you ruined the wedding when you were the only one who helped bring up these children, then not getting any support while you were blamed for Mike's choices and rejected. Did Kate go to Sarah's wedding?
She and her entire family were invited, and she was also in the bridal party as maid of honor. Not day hole. She dropped you quickly enough for her real mom. You know, the one that did literally nothing for the hardest part of her life, then strolled in when it was convenient. She threw away 15 plus years of care like it was nothing. You can't reverse that at a drop of a hat to full a seat at a wedding. Husband is the a-hole for not seeing that she kicked you to the curb without a thought and expects you to be okay with it, although I can see he's in a difficult position. He is in a difficult position, as both of his kids are not talking to each other and he was also started to be rejected by Sarah in favor of her stepdad. With Kate and her husband, she has it easier since there is no resentment there. But with her dad, she also has to face me and her brother. So, it's easier for her to spend more time with her mom's side of the family. That's very difficult and sorry for the position you are all in. I'm surprised though that she can't see the position of her brother and her dad. She would be too young to remember her by mom at her worst, but the others obviously can. It's great she can forgive and move on, but that doesn't remove the past and doesn't change how much she personally have done by stepping up to be her mother. I try to explain to her that Mike simply has a different relationship, but she doesn't accept that. Sorry to say, but she sounds quite self-centered. Hopefully she'll come around, but it's going to have to start with her offering a massive apology to all of you, and to you in particular.